thought I'd do a quick little video um, while I'm sitting at the job site waiting for the other truck to show up. I got a question last night. Somebody texted it to me. Um, the guy just got a dump truck. He's going to be owner operator, and he was. He basically asked. He said. Uh, how do you go about not getting like ripped off or taken advantage of when you first start like how do you know you're gonna get paid basically and you know that was one of the one of the questions I had when I first started you know it's like how do I know these people are gonna pay me like how do I know I'm not gonna be working for free you know that was one of the biggest questions and I still I still wonder all the time, like, am I going to get paid for this? You know, it's still, you know, one of the things uh, that's hard is you go from making 20 bucks an hour to, you know, almost more than quadrupling your wage, you know, so it's almost unreal, you know, like you go from making 20 bucks an hour to 120 bucks an hour. It's like, is this even real? Like, you know, are they going to pay me or am I doing this for free? What's up, Joey? Happy New Year's. What's up, AgTech, JR Transport? What's up, guys? Um, so when I first started, I was like, I always was like super paranoid. Like, am I going to be working for free? Can I afford to do this for free? You know, um, so one of the things uh, that you have to have when you first start is you have to obviously you need to look professional um your business needs to be professional you have to have the right paperwork right and that's how i started being professional so when i first started i already had a truck ticket book and what that is is it was this little book right um and i had gotten a copy from another dump trucker and i basically copy his ticket I basically copied his ticket, except for I changed, you know, his company name to my company name. I reworded a few different things to fit my business more personally, right? And uh, that was the first step to making sure I was always getting paid on time and getting paid for my work, right? Um, so you want to have like some sort of receipt book, right? and obviously you want to keep track of what's going on throughout the day and you know at the end of the day i in my book i make the customer sign it they sign it and they get a copy right and there's a there's two extra copies once i give them one so and i always another thing is you always want to make sure you have valid billing info before you like go do work for somebody make sure you got an email or something you can send the bill to because you know once the job is over and you go home uh, how are you going to contact the person like if you only have a phone number you're asking for trouble right because people don't answer phone calls <laughs> you know you also want to have the address of the job site you, you got to have the address because if they don't pay you then you have to go you know do like a lien or something and you need the address for that so i've personally never been ripped off from anybody to this point i've always been paid um there was a few times where i didn't get paid the full amount um you know because they were cheapskates you know and they were trying to rip me off but they never did because you know for one reason or another they paid you know you know it was more hurtful for them to not pay me than to pay me so another reason why I don't think I've ever really been ripped off is you know I have a big I kind of have a big presence in social media you know with my youtube channel and my facebook page my instagram you know they're pretty it, it's out there right so if somebody ripped me off you know they would definitely get blasted on those platforms 
right? So, you know, it just it's just another way of, figuring, you know, COA. My company is bigger, right? So, people take advantage of a bigger company, right? So, when you're just a small guy, they're more likely to take advantage of you. And that's mainly because you don't really know, you haven't been in business that long, you don't really know how things work, you know. Uh, you're not familiar with the processes of, you know, doing a lean or any of that type of stuff. I started expanding my business and I bought the equipment then I'm going to homeowners more often and those are the ones that I I feel like I've had the most problem with is homeowners you know they want you to do something and they want you to do it for free uh, I made it a business practice that I send them an, an estimate a formal estimate they have to respond to my email with yes, decline or accept, right? Um, and then I I'm, I ask for 50% up front now. Um, and if they can't pay 50% up front when my equipment arrives, then I don't want to work for you. You know, that's just how I am now, you know. If they don't want to pay 50% up front, then <laughs> I'm not doing anything. You know, that's just the way it works now. Oh, uh, not much, Blake. I'm just explaining to these these new guys, uh, you know, how to not get ripped off when you first start your business. You know, how to make sure you get paid, basically. Um, another thing that happens all the time, and I would say is more likely to happen than getting ripped off, is not getting paid on time. Now that is the, the trick right there. Getting people to pay you on time is so much harder. Yeah, Andrew. I mean, just don't release it. That's what I would do. I mean, as a mechanic, you have that you have that uh, authority to keep it until they are paid in full. Until you're paid in full. Um, so just don't release it to the customer. Just say you can't have it until full payment, you know? And yeah, I mean, there's definitely, you know, dump trucking is a little bit different because you do the work and then in 30 days you get paid, right? Yeah, so I would say that's a bigger problem like what Blake's saying is they're trying to run their business off of your money, right? So you're basically their bank, right? That's a bigger problem than not getting paid. The problem is it's not getting paid on time. Uh, companies will drag you out, you know. I would say the average is 45 days. 45 to 50 days is probably the average. You know, with my customers, I'm closer to 30. Um, but I know people that have, you know, haven't gotten paid for 180 days out. And it's just like, whoa, like, there's no way. If, if they get past 60 days, uh, it's going to become very painful for them and very expensive. You know, that's just the way I operate. You know, like, don't drag, my, don't hold my money out because I showed up on time and I did my work and I did it in a respectful way professional manner I need to get paid the same way you know so there's ways that companies will drag you out number one way I've seen is uh, they won't pay you if you don't send them a w9 or an insurance certificate I'm gonna wait for this noise to go away let me catch up on these comments That's 
done. Yeah, I wish I got paid 7 to 14. I mean, that would be nice. But in Washington, it ain't 7 to 14, it's 30. So, Super Dump just showed up. Yeah, that sucks, Andrew. All that debt, man. That's why when I try to have people get into business, man, I tell you, debt is not the way. You never want to do debt. Yeah, that... <laughs> it's definitely a lot more <laughs> than when I first started, Blake. Um, you know, and that's another thing, too. I want to get into is you got to set your own rate too I mean if you just take what other people give you your whole life that's all you're gonna get you know yeah I mean I got two trucks working today so yeah Andrew it, I mean there's they're basically all the same I mean you get a little more Yeah, so, I mean, getting paid on time is the biggest thing, um, you know, if, you know, sell the stuff. You don't have to keep it and keep paying that bill, man, you know, you can make just as much, it's just like trucking, you know, like that truck right there that's 35 years old makes the same as this $350,000 truck. They make about the same. Except for that truck's paid for, so I have a higher profit margin. You know? So, you know, that, that's just the way it is, you know? So, I would say that's a bigger issue, you know? It's not getting paid on time. So, what I do is QuickBooks tells me when the invoices are, how they're aging, right? And what that means is they tell me how late or when it's coming due and when it's, you know, overdue. That's what aging is called, right? And so, you know, I, uh, I always send out statements, like, especially for people that I know that are going to take longer to pay me than they should. I send statements all the time. It probably pisses them off, but I don't care, you know, because I'm trying to get paid on time. Yeah, that's a ripoff, Andrew, when people try and negotiate the rate afterwards. Um, you want to say hi to the YouTube guys, Brandon? What? You want to say hi to them? Hi. No, I mean, you want to hold and talk to them? Well, I'm loading this real quick. Here. You don't want to talk to him? Can you video? Sorry, guys. I gotta load this truck. We're wasting daylight. Better not be riding my ass. I went as fast as I could.
Yeah, I did.
Hey, Kathy. Kind of. You can kind of smooth it out on top.
good. Hold up. You can get it, you can keep going. <clears throat> You can hit that back corner there. Yep. Probably do maybe one or two more scoops right here in the middle. You'll want to smooth it out afterwards, though. Uh, it takes about a half an hour, I think, to load 20 30 minutes, something like that. Well, I think we're at 15 minutes right now. Smooth it out a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah. Back that way.
That's good. Sorry about that guys. So, yeah, you're good. These guys make a lot of noise. Must be some sort of vibrator or something. I'm guessing. Pretty good load. <laughs> Chaka, yeah, you're probably right. One, one or two scoops. Yeah, it takes it takes a few minutes. Yeah, it's kind of like wet gravel, the stuff I'm loading. Yeah, I would say Andrew, don't avoid them, and definitely, uh, you know, talk to them. You definitely got to talk to them. But I would try, you know, talking to them about maybe taking some stuff back. <laughs> you know, they're definitely gonna want to work with you because they don't want to. They they want their money. You know what I mean? Let me move this around this way. That way, I'm not getting anywhere close to that guy. You guys can see the process of this. That is so cool. They're building a hydrogen station for forklifts for Home Depot. Hydrogen, pretty cool, huh? Basically water. Um, so another thing, back to the main topic of getting paid and stuff. Um, one of the main things that also I've had to deal with is you email the wrong person the invoice, right? Sometimes, you know, maybe that person got fired and somebody else is in charge of the HR. So now you got to figure out how to get in contact with the company to get the right billing email, right? That's happened before. Uh, that's kind of a pain. Uh, so. That's one of the things. Let's see, this is the last load. This will go in the super dump. Then I'll load the excavator up on the trailer and then we'll take it home. The, uh... Yeah, I can shut this down. I don't need that on anymore. Um, another thing that keeps you from getting paid is... Let's see. Long email... Uh, them not having your W-9 or your insurance certificate, sometimes they won't even tell you they're missing it. They just won't pay you and you're like, hey, uh, what's holding up the payment? And I'm like, oh, you, oh, uh, you forgot to send us your W-9. It's like, seriously? I see what you did there. You know, they, that happens. And then, you know, sometimes, uh... You know, they, they forget, you know, people forget. I forget, they forget, you know. Or uh, the person you gave the copy of the invoice to didn't turn it in and they lost it. And so they want another copy of the truck ticket. So you either got to take a picture of yours and send it to them or you got to send them another copy or, you know, that happens too. You know, there's all sorts of reasons why payment can get delayed. And, uh, 
the main thing is is choosing to work for companies that you know are going to pay you on time and you know the right amount and it, it all just comes with experience really is what it all comes down to is experience and time in the industry right so I, I mainly have like three customers right now that I work for you know three four customers and they keep me busy basically year round um, and then I got new customers that I pick up every once in a while and uh, the main thing is, is keep your ear to the ground and don't work for anybody who's ever shorted somebody I mean that's that's one of the big things right there is if your buddy ever says hey man this guy shorted me this much money or you know he uh, he don't want to pay don't ever work for that guy write his name down remember it you know the list will be short but there will be a list of people you know and but I mean I've been blessed I've really been blessed guys I mean, I don't really know about Snap-on debt collectors and that type of stuff because I've never bought a Snap-on tool in my life. Like, I don't even own one Snap-on tool, I don't think. Unless it was something that, uh, you know, my grandpa gave me or he picked up at a yard sale or something. Well, I would say David's probably on the right track. Like, they're probably not going to bother you around the holidays. I mean, everybody knows things get a little bit tighter, you know. What's up, Bobby? So, we're on this big job site today. They're installing these hydrogen tanks. You probably can't see it. That that's in the way you get that holiday pay <laughs> yeah I would be getting it if I wasn't paying my driver in <laughs> I uh, he hasn't worked the past week because all the holidays and so I, I usually could have did this job by myself but you know he would be making his hours so you know you got to keep them happy too but I'm making some money on this one you know, I'm making like two grand to haul away four loads. So, I mean, not bad. Not a bad day. It's going to be a record year. I was just looking at QuickBooks earlier today, and we are finishing off this year with a revenue that I had never imagined in my first three years. Never. Never. <laughs> Not even in my wildest dreams. Like, I thought, you know, maybe by five years I would have been clearing a hundred grand, but man, it's just nuts. Yeah, if you've, if you've never missed a payment and this is your first time, they're not going to repo your stuff, dude. Not that quick. I mean that don't happen just think how many other guys aren't paying too you know how many other guys at your shop that got laid off too that are probably like oh I can't make the payments you know yeah I mean the other thing is Andrew is what one thing I've always done is I've always paid all my bills you know because I've I've always had like a little bit of a savings account, you know, for when emergencies happen, you know. There was one time where I got caught, you know, kind of with my pants down in that kind of a sense. Like, I was working for a company, I was trying to buy a house, and they threatened me with my job, you know. They're like, we might fire you, Brian. And But they never did. But they threatened me, and I was just like, 
uh, I'm trying to buy a house and my wife's pregnant. Like, what the heck? Like, how can you try and put me in this position? Like, that's messed up. But, uh, after that, I decided, I was like, this is never going to happen again. I'm going to be in a position where nobody will ever be able to make me feel stressed financially, you know. And I've, I've done pretty well, you know, ever since that one instance, I would say. Um, it's a record year, man. It's a record year. We cleared, I don't know, I just... I don't want to tell you guys because I don't want to feel like I'm bragging. I'm just so proud of the business. I'm so proud of, you know, what we've been able to accomplish. I'm thankful for my employee and my customers. You know, I just, I'm so thankful. Oh, yeah, exactly what David said. You know, just say, hey, man, I'm trying to make some payments. You know, I got late, you know, the shop closed after 35 years, you know, this, this happens, you know, so. See, that's another thing that really, everybody needs to take notice of Andrew's situation right here. He was working for a shop that had been open for 35 years. He thought, he probably thought his job was pretty secure, like he didn't think the shop was going to go out of business. Like, he was probably more worried about getting fired than the shop going out of business of this whole COVID thing. Like, day jobs are not secure at all. They're not. They're not secure at all. You know, you feel like you, you're safe, you're not taking any risks, but you're taking more risks than the business owner, you know, I think, personally. You know, because as a business owner, you're in control of the finances, you see everything that's going on. So you know 100% what the health of the business is right you know when things are getting slim and you need to tighten up like but when you're working for somebody they don't tell you nothing they don't tell you nothing you know i mean they might but you know the companies i work for they would have never have told me they would have just laid me off they would have been like oh sorry brian no work today see you later you know and that's the way most of most companies operate you know they're they're not gonna tell you that your job is at stake because of the workflow because they don't want you to stress out they want to keep you you know underneath the cover and just keep you know working you and then if something does happen then they just get rid of you because you're just a number to them you know that's i don't know how many times i can say this until i turn blue in the face i guess you know working for somebody is not all it's cracked up to be you know, there are, I was talking to my father-in-law, and he was telling me about Bowen doing layoffs. There was guys that had worked there for 35 years straight. 35 years straight. And then they got laid off. They got fired right before they could cash out on their pension. I mean, that's, that's the world we live in, guys. So, you know, start your own business, you know, take control of your life, take control of your finances, you know, don't let somebody else decide it for you, because if you do, you know, you're putting your life in their hands, literally, you know, you really are, you know, and it's... Yeah, you're right, JR. You are right. I am the business, and I'm a grinder, man. I, I, I will grind until the day I die. I mean, that's who I am. That's what my DNA says. I just have this one load that I'm sitting on, Blake. Let me just hop down real quick, and I'll show you guys how much I got left to haul out of here. Ugh. that's it right there so I'm guessing that's probably one more super dump load and then that's it I mean it be a big load but it's probably only one super dump load 
I mean, it's not, it's not that big. So, we should, there should be one more super dump load and then that'll be it. Um, I mean, that is a big load though. I got a private dump site, Chaka. Private dump site. Or I wouldn't be making any money if I had to pay dump this. I mean, as long as you're communicating with them, Andrew, that's the most important thing. So you're just going to the river? <laughs> no, I don't have any rivers near my place. Yeah, I'm charging a dump fee. Like, um, 500 bucks. But, you know, that's not nearly what it would cost if I took it somewhere, you know. But, I could charge more. They would probably pay it too. Um, but there's more work to be done here, so it's not like it's the end of the world, you know what I mean? They, I, that, I still got to take out a whole section over there. Uh, more like a parking area. <laughs> I'm building a parking pad <laughs> for the dump trucks and the trailers. Um, and it's kind of cold out. So, yeah. And this is good stuff. Once it dries out, it'll be rock hard. I mean, it's it's definitely soupy right now, but it's it's mainly all rock. So... Once it dries out, it'll be hard. It's, you know, it'll be hard. Like, I mean, you see how soupy it was, and I'm still sitting on top of the pile. You know, so. It's good stuff. Or else I'd be charging more. If it was, like, pure mud, no. <laughs> it'd be, I'd be charging a lot more. Because, I mean, what do you do with mud? You have to put it somewhere where it can dry, like, a year before you can do anything with it, you know? So. Yeah. Chuck is right. I mean, you credit can be very dangerous, man. It's very dangerous, you know? People don't understand the risk involved with credit. You know, like we have the super dump as debt, you know, which is very dangerous, you know, it's, it's a very big debt, you know, but I did a big, big down payment. And the other thing that I've done is I've worked so hard and I've saved the money that I've made. I've saved it, right? So I got a pile of cash. If there's no work, I can still make the payments and not sweat it. Yeah. Well, Andrew, hopefully the lesson is learned and, you know, you put that in your spank bank. You know, sometimes we think we learned the lesson and we don't and we do it again, just in a different way. Uh, you know... And then it comes back to bite us again, you know. We learn, sometimes it takes us, takes us a few times to learn, you know. I know a whole bunch of times I've learned the same lesson just in a different way. <laughs> so. Yeah, debt, debt is a tool, man. It's, but it's also, you know, that tool can hurt you big time, you know. You worked there for seven years. Man. So what do you guys got planned for New Year's Eve?
You guys got any special plans or anything? You guys doing anything fun for New Year's? You guys got any New Year's resolutions or anything like that? What's up, one mic? Happy New Year's, man. Sleeping. <laughs> I take my minimum payments for the debt I have and I try to have four months saved up. Now when I was younger I couldn't have done that. It's just a live and learn kind of deal. At least you're still young. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not any there very many concrete companies near you. I walk around here, they hire trucks every now and then to haul off their washout at the plant. Uh, the companies that are concrete companies have their own dump trucks around here, it seems like. At least all the ones I've seen. I think Holerid, yeah, Holerid has dump trucks too, so. What's up, Mike? Happy New Year, man. Happy New Year. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the, the thing that's important is just saving your money, man. Just save it. Just save it. I know it sucks having a pile of money there, but that's a better problem to have than stress. You know? Happy New Year, uh, Bilal. I think that's how you pronounce that. Happy New Year. What's up, Richard? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So, my New Year's resolution, uh, along with my other goals, I don't really do, I was talking to my driver today, I don't really do New Year's resolutions because I always have goals and I never wait for the new year to start them. I just say if I'm going to set a goal, I'm going to start now. I'm not going to wait till tomorrow to start. Stoneway over there. Yeah, the, the Stoneway doesn't have uh, dump trucks, but they got... Uh, I mean, they're owned by Gary Merlino, and he's got a ton of dump trucks, so he probably does that himself. Really? Like, uh, where at, Richard? Like, roughly where? We're going over to my grandma's and eating lasagna. Ooh! Lasagna sounds good. I, I was hoping my wife was going to make that tonight, but she's going to do uh, the chicken pot pie. Walla Walla is still a ways away, but it's, uh, well, you're in Oregon right now, right? Oregon's closer, I think, to me than Walla Walla, because you got to go over the pass and, you know. My goals for uh, 2021, though, are to do better than I did in 2020, which is going to be super hard. Oh, you're in Ohio. Oh, okay, that's a lot closer. <laughs> That's a lot closer. Um, so, this year, we made 315, so... 330, maybe, next year. If we don't get another dump truck, I want to make maybe 350. We don't If we don't buy another dump truck... If we get another dump truck... Maybe over half a million. If we get another, it'll be more than half a million. I know it will be. I know it will be. The revenue will be up over half a million in a year. What's up, Gary? 
Uh, I don't... My wife, I think she's on board. If I want to buy one, she'll let me. But at the same time, I don't think I want the debt. I don't want it. I mean, like, really, what's another 150000 a year? Like, what's it really mean to me? You know, like... I want to pay off my super dump first and to get our house built. I love living in the camper with our family. It's pretty sweet. We've we've had it good so far. I think this go so we've lived in a this is the second time we've ever lived in a camper, right? The first time was for like 6 months while we were selling our house and we were buying the duplex. Um and it was very tough because we had a newborn and a dog and a turtle and it sucked. I'm just going to say that. It sucked big time. Um, now, I would say this time it's been a lot more funner. It's been a lot better. It's been a lot better uh, living in the camper this, this go around. You know, we... Uh, We've actually had a good time this, this time so far. And we've lived in it for what? Like two, three months now? <laughs> I just think of it as an investment for down the road. It's not about how much I'll make next year. It's about having an extra free 100K in machinery four years down the road. Have relatives that could help Andrew? Question mark. You hear that, Brian? That's a backup beeper. <laughs> yeah, a lot of good it did him. I mean, the guy still was gonna get ran over. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Richard. It's closer to Oregon. Um, the, and that's another reason, Blake, why I'm considering it. It's like okay. Can I get work for another super dump? I'm 90% positive I could keep it busy all summer, no problems asked. I would just have another truck working for the quarry. So, I, I haven't talked to the quarry yet, and I'd like to talk to the owner personally and say, hey man, you know, don't answer right now, just get back to me. Like, hey, if I buy another dump truck, you know, is that a smart move? Like, you guys need another dump truck you know and then if I do buy another one it'll be on debt too because I'm not going to have the money right which I don't want to do that but if I did we would have to save even more money like going into winter even more money so we'd have to have like I don't know at least 150000 in the bank going into winter you know, just to get through winter without having any stress, right? But, I mean, here's the other thing, right? Finding the right dump truck is going to be a lot harder because, uh, you know, they're not making them right now because of the whole COVID thing, right? And then on top of that, finding the specific spec you know that I want yeah it's got to have an Allison and it's got to have a Maxwell right so I mean my options are not that much I don't have that many options right now so it's 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 a it's a matter of you know finding the right deal OSW is full stream ahead huh Dang, okay. I mean, I was I was driving past Kenworth the other day and their super dumps were gone. They sold them. I haven't I haven't spoke to JST in a while. I, I texted him Merry Christmas, but that was it. Put your family in the house, then buy the truck. Yeah. See, that's what I want to do, Ron. 
but at the same time, like, I know, like, I'm so positive, like, that I know I could make so much more money. Like, I know I could. I just know it, you know? Like, I, I feel it so hard, you know, in my brain, like, Brian, you know you could keep that truck busy. You know it. You know you could make the money and save it. So, you know, yes, you'd be putting off your house for another six months, seven months, eight months, a year maybe. But five years from now, when they're both paid off, like, <laughs> like, damn, you know. Just tell them you want to build one. Say, I want this box with the motor, this trans, and get it to me. I'm your guy. Truck prices are actually pretty good now. I was looking at a few yesterday online, and they were down like 20k in price. Yeah, no, the prices definitely have gone down in truck on trucks. That's another reason why I would consider buying one. But they're down for a reason, right? Because the workflow has slowed down. People aren't spending the money. So, you know, while I think I could keep it busy, it's just, you know, there is that little bit of doubt in my mind, you know, that keeps me from pulling the trigger right now, you know? So, yeah, I know. Tr truck prices are definitely down, Blake. You definitely got that right. And there was two super dumps uh, for sale at Richie Bros auction. There were 2005s, but they were the strong arms, which you guys know. I don't really want a strong arm. At least another one. If you have the work, you will get the deals because everyone else is short on work. Yeah. I mean, right now I don't really have the work, per se. Like, I mean, I'm keeping my one super dump busy, for the most part. Like, it's been pretty busy. Like, obviously, Christmas, New Year slowed it down. But my dispatcher for the Cory is telling me next week's looking good. So, you know, where are we at? I don't know. I feel like next summer though you know if I did buy another truck if I bought a used one a used super dump you know for 80 90 or something like that put half down I could have it paid off by the end of the summer that would that would I think that would be my ideal situation is if I bought a used one for around a hundred grand and you know I could easily have it paid off. But the thing is, is what's the point? I mean, yeah, I have another truck, another driver, you know, do I really want to expand? Like, I don't know. I'm still up in the air, guys. I think it, it will take back off in January or February. It will be a good year. If the Corey would commit to you for another truck, then heck yeah, do it. See, that's what I'm thinking, Ron. Like, if I talk to, if I talk to the Corey, and they're like, yeah, Brian, pull the trigger, you know, I would probably do it. You know, that's a big gamble, you know, because I'm taking a risk based on somebody else's business, right? So it's a big gamble, but. Because of the way I save, I know I could make it work, you know. So, I think my wife is at the point where she's like, if you want a truck, just buy a truck. You know, I, I'm pretty sure I've worn her down to that point. But, she knows I'm not going to make a stupid decision. Yeah. Like, I mean, but at the same time, like, I bought that new Super Dump, and it was basically like having a motor out, like, right out the gate. Like, that was basically the same scenario. 
Because, like, the Super Dub didn't work for, like, a month straight, just about. Because of all the downtime. Like, it was nuts. You know? If I bought another truck, a new one, oh, man, I would love a new Kenworth, man. Those Kenworths with the Allison in it. But at the same time, like, I like the idea of having all Peterbilts. But at the same time, and that Kenworth was nice. Kenworth was nice. I just don't know if I could own a Kenworth, you know? I, I love Kenworths, and I love Peterbilts, but I got two Peterbilts. Like, I don't want to split up W990. Oh, dude, those 990s look so sweet. I would definitely own a W990. I think they look cooler than the 880s. Yeah. Yeah, those things look sweet. Yeah. Have the bed and truck built to your spec. Quarter inch AR450 floor man. Not that eighth inch. Oh, definitely, Chaka. And the tailgate would be quarter inch too. Not not that uh you know three millimeter crap four millimeter not that stuff but you know that would cost a lot more money too though you know here's the other thing right guys here's the other thing i've been thinking about like if i buy another super dump and hire another driver i would probably be so lazy i probably wouldn't even work the old truck i'll be honest like, I would probably try and retire the old truck. Most of the time, people don't have issues like you and me. <laughs> yeah, right, Blake? We seem to have the best luck in the world, psych. Oh, man. It's always prepare for the worst and expect the worst. You know, I feel like if I bought another truck, I wouldn't work. Like, I'd be like, no, nah, I don't need the money. I, I got two trucks working. They're both working full time. Like, I'll just sit at home. <laughs> I would probably do that. Like, that's the problem. Like, I don't know. I would probably still work, but I would like the idea of be like, oh, I just lay at home. Let's go on vacation this month or something, you know? Yeah, yeah, Blake, like if I got another one, I would mainly just focus on the dispatching, you know, just mainly keeping them busy instead of driving them, you know. I'm just trying to think like, okay, I'm 31 years old, or I'm turning 31, or maybe I'm 31, turning 32. How old am I? What more do I need in life? Once my house is built, like literally, what more do I need? Like I got the coolest machines. I got a side-by-side. -side, I got a dirt bike. Like I literally don't need anything else. Like my wife, she has a few things she wants to get, but it's not like I'm not going to take an astronomical amount of time to pay for it, you know? I guess getting good drivers is the hard part. Yeah. It's hard to focus on getting them out and finding new work when you're stuck in a truck all day. It is, Blake. It is, you know. And when you're on the phone all day texting and driving, I mean, it, it's dangerous, man. <laughs> more, more cocaine, more vodka. <laughs> Jeez Louise, guys. This is actually water. It's not vodka. Fred Meyer's brand. I mean, guys, like, like you've seen where I came from, guys. Like, three years ago, 
I literally had nothing. I just had two cars that were paid for. You know, I didn't have any toys, like any cool toys or nothing. You know, I had like 10 grand in the bank. That was it. And now I'm over here with the stack of cash. And I got all the toys I've ever dreamed of. You know. I will say, when I was at Bass Pro Shops the other day, I was like, I've never really been a boat guy, but a pontoon boat would be cool to have. <laughs> like, it would be cool to have. So I'm like, I want a pontoon boat. Now I've been kind of convincing myself, like, yeah, Brian, you need a pontoon boat. That'd be so sweet. But it's like, dude, I would only use it like, two or three times a year, what's the point in buying a $40,000 boat and using it twice or three times? I don't know. I'm getting to the point, guys, where it's like, okay, how much money is too much money? You know? I'm just so happy with what I got, you know? It's hard to see myself with more. I know a lot of you guys are in the same situation too. You're like, man, we got it so good. We got all this. You know, it's like, really? Do I need a private jet? No. You know. Just, I never imagined I'd be here. You know. They're fun. Pontoons. I mean, even more fun when they're not yours. <laughs> yeah. Cha ching start new year early. <laughs> yeah. You would like this. Seen a red W9 big rigs spun out blocking the road on Snoqualmie yesterday. Dude tried to go barefoot. What was it a big rigs truck? It was a bit was it a big rig tanker truck or is it just a semi spun out? Dude tried to go barefoot, yeah. I've been there before. I've been I've done that before. Barefoot up the pass. <laughs> no way! I'm gonna have to call my buddy and find out who it was now. Spun out, huh? It didn't flip or nothing, right? They didn't crash or nothing, just spun out or what? Damn. That's nuts. I feel sorry for Aaron, man. That's a lot of money spinning out up there. <laughs> Not crashed, okay. Just spun out, that's okay, that's good. That's good news. Those guys, man, I, I look at all the trucks they have, and I remember when I first worked there and they had like 10 trucks, and now they got like 20. It's just nuts. Nuts. Like, they buy new pickup trucks every year now, just about. It's like, I don't know. It would be nice to have a new pickup, eventually. But I mean, I'm happy with my truck, you know. Just happy with everything I got. Nuts. We're gonna have this whole pad poured in one day. They got concrete truck after concrete truck, man. They, they're spending some money on concrete today. You know what I'm surprised they haven't designed yet? I should patent this idea where you take a dump truck and have like some sort of funnel on the back of it, right? Where you could just dump the whole dump truck in that right there. Like a hopper for the cement truck. Dude, I could become a millionaire if I just designed that. Because these concrete trucks are so slow. I mean, if they had a hopper for that pumper truck, 
Dude, I can just back up, boom, dump it. Back up, boom, dump it. Back up, boom, dump it. And then have all the trucks out of the way. Instead of having like six or seven trucks lined up. Dude, I should patent that idea. Just make a hopper for that. It could just be on a little trailer that the pumper truck pulls behind itself. You know? Dude, that's brilliant right there. That's a good idea, ain't it? So, goals for next year, I want to do better than this year. I don't know if it's I want to build the house or buy another truck, or both. Like, it depends on how the rest of this winter goes. My dad was telling me about when he was younger, they had concrete trucks that mixed everything on the truck so there was no waste. Yeah. I've, I've heard of them still making those, Blake. Uh, when they mix it on the truck, and they just charge you for how much you know there is. It's getting cold, guys. You know what I really want is I want Cabela's and Bass Pro Shop or whoever it is to hurry up and get me my snow plow before it starts snowing, because I know it's going to be snowing within a month here at least so it's getting cold it's definitely getting cold what so what's your goal blake how much are you gonna make next year you're gonna pay that tesla off or is it, did you pay cash for that you should plan a trip up to washington That Tesla looks sweet, man. I seen when you put that uh, the ceramic coating on it. Dang. That thing looks premium right there. What time is it? 10.32. Two grand before lunch. That's pretty good right there. <laughs> That's pretty good right there. It just depends if we get another truck or not, what the goal will be. So do you think you're going to get one? Like, where would you say, like, scale of 1 to 10, mean 10, definitely we're buying one, or 0, not happening, never. Where would you say you're at? And don't say 5. Somebody texting me? I keep getting messages. Um, so what's your goal? Like, what are you guys' goals? Chaka, what com what company do you work for, Chaka? I don't think I know what company you work for. Is it Silver? This is a pretty cool. Did I show you guys the, the hydrogen tank that they they got on site? When this guy pulls out, I'll show it to you. Pretty cool. They had to set it with this massive crane. And I mean like massive. It was a, a magnum crane. <laughs> no, you can't say number five. You can't say five. See the hydrogen tank right there? That's pretty cool, huh? So you don't know. So it's basically you have no idea. That's what number five is. You don't know. It depends on how the year goes. 
Isn't it crazy how, you know, we don't really know how our business is going to go. We just go for it, you know? It's crazy, you know? The fact that we're in business and we don't even know if there's going to be work a month from now. But we're just like, yeah, there's going to be work, you know? There's always work. You know? The world will never just shut down. So there's got to be work. Yeah. I mean, I will know for sure by April whether or not we're going to have another truck or not. April, May is when I decide. I would say. Yeah. Oh, I feel like I'm the same, Blake. It's just a it's just a matter of time. You know, whether or not we get one this year or next year. You know, C R H C R H Hi, babe. Say hi to the kids for me. C R H, aren't they the ones that uh, don't they have tankers and farming and stuff like that? Or am I totally off? I thought they were C H R. Yeah, Box is in here. Act busy. <laughs> uh oh. Well, you see, I'm operating the controls, honey. <laughs> We're just waiting for the super dump to go dump the load and get back. My wife says I can have another truck, and she says I can have another truck. <laughs> Cement roadstone holding. Oh, okay. Are they right in, uh, are they right next to Ellensburg? I know there's a cement plant right before the Loves in Ellensburg coming from the wet side. See, my wife said I could have another truck. She says, your wife says you can have another truck. So that means I can have another truck. <laughs> if we had enough money in the bank, she would say yes. I know she would. You see the, when we see the checks rolling in from two trucks, it's hard to say no to a third. guys well I gotta go hit the porta potty I gotta go pee so after the house is built you can have another one uh oh the box has spoke guys we have to build the house first that's kind of how I feel anyways I mean it would be super nice to just get one before you know If Blake's wife says he can have another one, another two, then I can have one, right? Yeah, those guys are working hard. That's pretty cool, huh? Plug power. After I get the house where I can have two. You're not Blake's wife? 
I know, but his wife said he could have some, so. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm going to catch you later. I got to go to the bathroom, so. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to pound that like button and pound that subscribe button for more great content. And uh, put in the comments what kind of videos you want to see.